and welcome back to the Shiggly Shed. Bit of a different little project today for the VMAX. We're going to come up with some kind of rear light idea. As you can see, the cowl that I made with the L hinge is temporarily on here. I borrowed it back from the painter who's doing the paintwork. As you can see, it's been primed and the bodywork's been started on it. Um, still a long way to go with it, but I basically needed it back just to kind of get an idea for the, the shape and the the tolerances and things with regards to where the light can go. Um, we did have an original idea for it that involved a cool little LED strip and some mesh and stuff, but John's had a bit of a, a brainwave with regards to making a custom rear light, so that's what we're going to have a go at. And like I say, I need to basically figure out what I can get away with that doesn't foul when that L hinge operates. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of thinking required, so probably going to do some experimenting, make up some little kind of uh, model ideas, some prototypes and things like that. Just get a bit creative I think, just get a bit creative and think outside the box and see what we can come up with. My tools for battle include various sheets of red acrylic, uh, sort of perspexy stuff. I've also got various different bits of film. Uh, some kind of mirror material too uh, and I've also got a couple of wee LED strips to work with so I think first of all I'm going to come up with some kind of unit shape that can you know make it out of cardboard and then make sure it fits into the cowl and, and doesn't foul when it goes up and down cowl doesn't foul I'm a poet and I just didn't realise um, yeah make up some kind of <laughs> Make us some kind of model that goes in the cowl that can go back and forward and make sure that it doesn't obviously foul that that um, that mechanism. And then once that's in place, I can start to come up with shapes of acrylic and where the light's going to go and things like that. <laughs> Okay, so this is my sort of rough template shape that I've come up with that allows space for the L hinges and moves freely with the cowl without hitting anything. Um, so I kind of need to now translate this into acrylic and figure out basically the, the, the shape of it. The base pieces are probably going to be just a sort of black plastic and then the front piece and the back piece will be acrylic. Um, yeah, I think this could work quite well. So I'm going to basically try and make the black kind of outline box piece first and then start to think about cutting the acrylic. 
yeah, that, I think I'm pretty pleased with that shape, and I think that will be quite function, you know, functional quite well. Um, so, like I say, I just need to start actually translating it into usable materials and not cardboard. I've stolen one of Mrs. Shirley's plant pots. Perfect kind of plastic material that I can shape quite nicely. Just don't tell her. She won't miss one. She's got a bunch of them. Okay, well, Mrs. Shugley won't be happy because a uh, plant pot died in vain. Um, I basically, I can't get plastic to mould the way I want it to, at least not with the kind of limited tools I have. I think I'd need to make like a solid wooden shape and then like mould the plastic around it. Um, not 100% sure how I would do that. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to be exactly what I want. So I'm gonna have a go at using some aluminium because I can actually form that and shape it a bit better. Um, yeah, there's no real issue with using aluminium. Plastic's obviously just cheaper. Making a light surround out of it, you know, it's, it's fine. So yeah, I'm gonna cut a strip of aluminium and then try and start shaping that to, yeah, to the right shape. <laughs>
be pretty effective actually. It took quite a bit of heat to get the metal up to temperature. <coughs> the torch more or less brought the aluminium to melting point. Um, I could see that the parent metal aluminium was, was basically liquid at points. Um, so I think the, the actual rod itself has a lower melting point than the aluminium but to get a decent like bead or like a flow on the go you really need to kind of have the aluminium up to melting point anyway um, in which case that's the you know perfect temperature for, for the rod to melt well I mean it's not like as neat as some lovely stacked dimes uh, TIG welding but for this kind of job where structural integrity is not really the issue it's just kind of cosmetic um, and it, 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 I think it's meant to be relatively strong um, yeah, I can dress this down, but yeah, for this kind of job, it's ideal. It's definitely a nice um, extra little tool to have in my toolkit, being able to join aluminium in, in little jobs like this. So, I'm going to file this down, smooth it off, and uh, maybe have a wee strength test, just double check that it's all nice and solid. But, like I say, it's a light housing, it doesn't, it's not going to be under any stress at all. So, this is kind of perfect for this, uh, this application. Yeah, pleased with that. What a good result. Right, after some dressing, yeah, it looks relatively good. It's not, um, well, I don't know how strong it is structurally, <coughs> but aesthetically, it looks fine. It feels pretty sturdy. I've just been um, obviously flatting it back and, and smoothing it off with, um, with the grinder and the file. And it doesn't feel like it's delicate in any way, but <coughs> like I say, I don't think it's for any structural jobs, that little brazing stick but for this kind of thing spot on yeah really pleased with that um, recommend them for this kind of thing uh, you do need a very hot blowtorch like a like a map gas or a propane torch like the thing I'm using um, just to get the aluminium up to the temperature it needs to be but aside from that yeah really pleased so the next thing to do is to figure out the internals and the light like I said earlier I've got some films and uh, uh, lights and things to play about with so Let's have a go. Right, I've gone ahead and put a little epoxy two-part kind of resin stuff over the back. Um, but you can see it's all kind of mirror on the inside. Once that's dry, I'll smooth all that off and I'll probably blast the outside with some black paint so that it blends in when it's um, in the back of the cowl. You don't really see it, but like if you lift the cowl, obviously on the hinges, um, you will see that just the kind of back portion of it, just kind of this section. So it'd be nice to just have it a bit more uniform and uh, and smooth. So the next thing to think about while that dries is the actual lights going inside it. So I've got these LED strips. They were like sort of strip tail lights. Um, I've cut this one down to the right size to sit um, in the kind of the bottom section in there. 
and then I want to cut another one to fit in the top section um, so that one's basically on the bottom, one's in the top facing each other and then with the mirrored inside hopefully that kind of amplifies the whole arrangement um, and then we've got a cool kind of idea to put some two-way mirror uh, film on some perspex for the front section and hopefully it will kind of make it a sort of infinity effect you'll get that sort of um, the bounce from the inside of that film off the mirrors mirror film that we've already put inside will hopefully just kind of create that infinity mirror effect um, I've seen um, it done before in cars and things but I've not seen it done on a bike yet so have a go at it and see what the effect's like. Um, I think either way, you put a bunch of lights and mirrors into a light, it's gonna it's gonna look cool, isn't it? Right, as a wee test, what I've done is I've stuck the one-way mirror red film onto a piece of that red acrylic so if you see here you see my hand through that the reflection is not great but you can see my hand through that so you'll see a light shine through that but you flip it over and it's a mirror there's the camera there so hopefully you shine the light from this side you'll see it out the way but also that light will then reflect off this mirror and bounce off the mirror film already in the light casing and create that sort of infinity mirror effect. That is the theory. So we'll have a little experiment with it and see if, if it works and if it's if it's a gore then we'll you know do a nicer piece and um yeah mock it all up and see what it looks like. I've just quickly wired in two LED strips, uh, glued them into the top and the bottom, like I said earlier, and this is a piece of acrylic which uh, John's cousin made, just like the fly screen for the front of the bike. It's just a, a tester one because it's not the right shape, but um, it will give us a decent idea of how this is going to work. I've put the so two-way film on, one-way film, sorry. So we've got the kind of red on this side. Um, you see that off, you see that's red. But it's mirrored on the other. So when we put that on there, and we light up our LEDs, we get that cool kind of mirrored effect. I'll show you a close-up. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty unique little light. I've not really seen anything quite like that, especially on a bike. So, yeah, I've still got a bit of refinement to do. I'm going to obviously clean it all up a bit, give it a wee sand, and then give the outside of it a spray black um, to make it all blend in a little bit more. And then this will get stuck, basically, to the underside of the cowl, kind of like what I showed you earlier when I was making the shape. And then the piece of acrylic will get put across the front of the cowl, the cowl um, and hopefully we'll, we'll get that effect when, when the brake light operates. Um, like I say, it's just a fun little project. It's quite fun to just do something a bit different, play about with electronics and LEDs and, you know, arts and crafts. Kind of not really my forte, but actually quite fun just to take a wee break from the, the mechanics and just, yeah, sit here and have some fun. I'm not going to be able to mount this really until the cowl gets properly painted and stuff and sorted. So I've got a bit of time to just finesse this a little bit and play about with it. But just a, just a little episode to show you kind of roughly what the, the idea is for the back light. Um, and yeah, hopefully it will be effective. Anyway, as usual... 
please do give me a like, leave me a comment, and make sure you subscribe to the Sugarly Shed channel. I appreciate all the support. I will see you next time. Take care. Goodbye.